I, I go along with Dostoevsky, I'm afraid, on this. If God does not exist, everything is permissible. Now, he was not saying that atheists are bad. He was saying that at the base level, there appears to be no rational justification for morality if you reject God. Let me give you an example okay. of that, a very famous example of it. And I'd love your take on this, actually. You'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would. <laughs> you see, Richard Dawkins is conflicted, very obviously, because in a very famous statement, he said, you know, this universe is just what you'd expect it to be. If at the bottom, I quote, there is no good, there is no evil, there is no justice. DNA just is that we dance to its music. Now, if that's true, the Las Vegas gunman was just dancing to the music of his DNA, and there's no blame attaching. There's no good, no evil. So Dawkins is claiming that the categories don't exist, which is very odd for a man who rails against the Bible and talks about an evil God when he doesn't even have the concept. But then he discovers that he's a moral being. And something inside him reacts against that. And he writes, much to the laughter of serious philosophers, he writes, we are the only creatures who can rebel against our selfish genes. And as one of them pointed out, if we are simply our selfish genes, what immaterial principle can help us rebel against them? So I see out there the atheist world. Now, Larry, believe me, I don't put all atheists in the same category as Richard Dawkins. That would be unfair, very unfair as you pointed out, the aggression and so on. But this analysis, that if you take atheism to its logical conclusion, you end up with no morality, uh, I noticed that is being believed all over Europe. And I would dare to say it's why there's such moral confusion around the place. So it's a big issue. So I'd love your take on it. Well, as I said, surround yourself with atheists if you want a safe community. <laughs> there, what, with that view? Dostoevsky is committing a fallacy. Do you think so? There's no connection between the existence of God and right or wrong that I can see. There's no connection between belief in the existence of God and right and wrong that I can see. Um, you didn't say how it is that God does guarantee that certain things are right or certain things are wrong. We've, we've known since Plato uh, a fatal objection to this view. Um, think about it this way. Suppose you want to learn piano and you're interviewing piano teachers. And the first piano teacher comes in and, and you say, play for me, because you want to know whether this piano teacher is capable of playing good music. And, and she bangs on the keys and jumps up and down on the piano and says, that is good music. And you think, wow, I'm not going to hire this teacher. And she insists, that's good music. And then you bring in the next piano teacher, and, and she plays beautifully. And she says, that is good music. And you agree, that is good music. Now, both teachers have said, that is good music. The fact that they say it makes no difference to whether the music is good. The music is good or it's not. And likewise, when God says, thou shalt, thou, thou shalt not kill, either you shouldn't, and God recognizes that and tells you so, or you should and God is wrong, but it doesn't make a difference what God says. It's right or wrong independently of what he says. And so the I don't see... The problem. The youth is problem. Yes, yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, first of all, music in its relative goodness is not raising a moral issue. So I think the analogy is slightly uh, suspicious. Secondly, I think the youth problem falls down on the fact that it confuses God's will with his character. And... Again, you see, we're dealing with things that are incredibly difficult to define. But where God comes into it for me is that at the scientific level, I believe the fact that we can do science points to an intelligence behind the universe. I believe that the fact that we discover ourselves to be moral beings points to a moral being behind the universe. Now, that works 
as far as I'm concerned, is an inference to the best explanation, especially when I discover a document, the Bible, covering many centuries, which has at its heart the whole question of relationship with God and morality as hugely important issues. And I can't prove that to you mathematically any more than I can prove that my wife loves me mathematically. But I'd risk my life on it because it seems to me there's sufficient evidence to buy into it. Because for me, it's a better explanation than the reductionist one. I have, we haven't used that word tonight. No, I'm, I'm not a reductionist. No, I suspected you weren't, which is why I kept back from it. But Dawkins is, and many people influencing the culture are, and that nothing but, we're nothing but atoms and molecules and so on, that really destroys morality. So if you found a place for morality, I think that's marvelous. From where I sit, that's because you're recognizing that you're a being made in the image of God.